On Thursday afternoon, I was holding a three-hour-old little boy. My grandson was born on Thursday. Now, not the little one that's here. He's a little older, about 18 months, 19 months, and weighs about 30 pounds. But Robert David, who was born this week, weighed six pounds, 12 ounces, six pounds, 10 ounces, and 19 inches long. Just a tiny little guy. Holding this tiny infant, my grandson, he was wrapped in a linen receiving blanket to swaddle him, and I could not help but think about Christmas. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger. So it was not only that I had the joy of being uh, with my daughter and son-in-law and new grandson and his sister, Elizabeth, but to have it connected to Christmas even deepened it. Now, I had gone to Maryland as soon as we knew that Alyssa, our daughter, was having the baby. I went to help, mainly by watching uh, our granddaughter Elizabeth, and it got me to thinking when Jesus was born, there were no grandparents there to help with things. Mary's mother wasn't there to help her. The in-laws weren't around for support. We don't know for sure, but we presume Mary was alone. Mary was alone except for Joseph. And then I got to thinking about Joseph. We know little about Joseph, so the story could be told in different ways to different effect, and you've probably heard some of them. So I was thinking about one way that you could imagine Joseph was Joseph the carpenter, good with wood, but not people. (laughs) Rather spend time in his shop than be around people, or especially children. And certainly not comfortable, you know, with women's personal matters, especially giving birth. And so what was he doing? I picture Joseph, this Joseph, hiding behind the donkey while Mary's trying to give him instructions on what to do and how to do it. Joseph helping, but then not wanting to look at what he was helping with in terms of the birth. And then the next thing he knows, he's holding this tiny little newborn child. Can you hear him say it in spite of himself? Look at those tiny little fingers and tiny little toes. I imagine this Joseph too, kind of the bumbling Joseph when the shepherds arrive and Joseph, you know, blocking the entrance and shooing them away, telling them to get away as if they were the lost sheep and not letting them anywhere near. It's Joseph, the protective dad, you know. But maybe there's a different kind of Joseph. Maybe it could be the practical, helpful Joseph who had talked to the midwife before they had left Nazareth because he wanted to be prepared just in case Mary's time came while they were on the journey to Bethlehem. He wanted to know what he was to do and how he was to do it. This is Joseph, the one who was prepared. Then we picture Joseph rustling around the stable making a bed for Mary with straw and blankets, and then seeing the manger and thinking, well, that that would make a good cradle. We could use that. And then cleaning out the feed and lining it with fresh straw and a blanket as well. He was ready. And then we see this Joseph handling himself like a seasoned midwife, assisting Mary as she gives birth, until we see Joseph confidently holding that tiny baby. And then when he spies the shepherds, Joseph the stalwart, inviting them in, proudly showing them his new son, and, but ensuring the safety of mother and child. Now, this is our imagination. How did it happen with Joseph? We don't know. Luke tells us about Mary, that she treasures the shepherd's account of the angels and their message, and she ponders them, We know that. We don't know what Joseph is thinking. 
Is he the worried husband, father, fretting about, well, what do we do now? And wondering if they'll ever make it home again and questioning if he's up to the task of fatherhood and there's so much thinking, he's just rattled. Or maybe he is Joseph, ever the Boy Scout, prepared and ready to handle the situation. Of course, there is this matter of the ch child's identity. The angel had said to Joseph, over nine months ago before, the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And now here he is holding a baby boy that is somewhat unexplainable, whom they have indeed named Jesus. Is Joseph perhaps also treasuring and pondering the reality of this holy child? Or is he still doubting the whole experience and trying to piece together a more logical explanation of exactly what had led to this birth? And that makes me wonder about you and me. Are you still doubting, questioning, trying to piece together what this birth is all about? I imagine such doubts and questions eventually can lead to faith in the God who sent Jesus, just as it likely did for Joseph. So pursue those questions. Don't be afraid of those doubts. Seek this Jesus and his identity. Who knows where it will lead? And or, on this holy night, are you treasuring the child? Pondering the miracle of Christmas. The Son of God, born as one of us, who came to save us. Such contemplation leads us to joyful worship and hope-filled living. On this holy night, but in the days and nights before us. Treasuring this child, celebrating this birth, the Son of God born as one of us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.